If you wanna see the cutest thing, take a look at my puppies. Every time I come over here to the new office, they wanna see what their daddy is doing. Where did daddy go? What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Recently, I came across this video by Richard Farron, I think is his name, and I'll have a link in the description if you wanna check out his video, and also, he has a really, really good YouTube channel. And he was talking about how to turn $500 into financial freedom, and he shared some of the strategies or methods that he used to do that. And I really enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed that message and really got me thinking back in my life, in my investing journey, in my entrepreneurial journey, what are some of the best $500 investments that I have made that have ended up contributing towards me achieving financial freedom. And for many, you know, financial freedom is one of those terms that many people maybe don't quite understand. Maybe they don't really even know what that means. And I get it because for those that have been struggling in debt their entire life, it is hard to even comprehend financial freedom. You know, financial freedom was something that even for me was hard to really understand. Keeping in mind for those that don't know my background at all, you know, both my parents divorced when I was young. They filed bankruptcy not once, but twice independent of each other, which is just an amazing accomplishment that they could actually pull that off. So that was some of the financial lessons that were passed down to me. So I had no idea what financial freedom even was or what that meant. There's no way I can even define that. But the most important thing that I have come to realize, you know, financial freedom is about choice. It's about opportunities. It's about getting to do what you want when you want to do it. Now, is that 100% of the time? No, but for a majority of my time now, that's why here I am. It is a snow day in the Rose household. I am working in my new studio, new office. It's not completely furnished yet, as you can probably tell, but it is getting there. And the fact that I could build <laughs> a second studio, a second office, on top of our pool, this pool house. And I mean, I can't think of a better example of financial freedom. And just so for those that aren't familiar yet, oh, you can't even see it, I forgot. You got all the snow and everything. I was gonna show you the pool. This, the fact that we could afford to do this, pay cash, and only thing get stressed out about is the fact that it took like nine months longer than it should have. Either way though, you know, financially, it has been a no-brainer, and I am looking forward to what I'll be able to do in this office for the coming years, whether that be more YouTube videos, more podcasts, having guests on the show. I mean, there is a lot of excitement that's going to happen, and to me, like, that is what financial freedom is all about. So when we think about, you know, for me, going back to the $500 and turning that into financial freedom, what did that look like for me? What were some of the best investments that I made that hopefully can help you to achieve financial freedom for yourself? And that's why I wanted to break down today. And before we get into these, if you uh, haven't yet, be sure to like, Subscribe if you haven't to the Wealth Hacker channel here. I got more videos coming your way right now, coming off of a COVID stretch, still not 100%. You can check out my video where I talk about COVID and how it impacted our family in another video. But let's go ahead and get down to these $500 investments. The first one is what I refer to as income accelerators. So these are different investments, different items that you can purchase that essentially increase, multiply, accelerate your ability to earn money, to make an income. And these could be books, these could be courses, these could be paying somebody for consulting, it could be different coaching programs or mastermind groups. Essentially, the whole idea here is that you are getting information, you are getting experience 
at an accelerated clip that's going to help you make that much more that much faster. And I know a lot of people, you know, joke about they don't read books, like what's the point? Because you got YouTube, you've got social media, you can get all this information so much faster. And to that, I don't think you understand or realize the impact that books can have on your life. And some of the books that I've read, I mean, we're talking exponential, exponential impact on my career, on my family, on my business, how I invest. You know, some of my books I've mentioned here, obviously Rich Dad Poor Dad was uh, one of the first ones. You got Automatic Millionaire by David Bach. You got Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover. Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. We got $100 Startup by Chris Gillibo. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And if you've seen my other office, you see all the books that I have on my bookshelf. And my kids are always asking me, Dad, have you read like all these books? Technically, no. The dad hasn't read all of them, but I've read a majority of them. And whether that's actually buying the physical book or listening to it on Audible, which is one of my most favorite ways to digest books as I'm going for a walk or taking my puppies out on a walk. Essentially though, these books have helped me accelerate my income. Same thing could be said about courses. And I know there are so many people just on the online space that <sighs> hate courses, think, oh, it's a rip off, it's a waste of money. And yes, there are a lot of courses out there that are a waste of money. But if you are purchasing a course because you are wanting to accelerate your learning, there is a specific skill that you are wanting to learn, and there is somebody out there that has done it before you, and they have packaged all of that material in a way that's going to help you learn that much faster, then why wouldn't you invest 100, 300, 900, couple thousand dollars to learn something in say a week, two weeks, three weeks time, instead of trial and error, trying to figure it out on your own and taking, dear Lord, a year or two years to figure it out. And for me, I've spent thousands of dollars on courses, anything from YouTube to SEO to blogging on goal setting. I mean, the list goes on and on, investing. I mean, there are so many different courses that I have bought and it has been worth every single penny. There have been a few duds, but for the most part, I made sure to do you know, my due diligence, do my homework before I actually invested into the course to make sure that it was a good fit and a good time you know, for me to digest that information. So income accelerators, you know, anything that you can do to advance your experience, your expertise, your knowledge, and do so at an advanced clip. Once again, that's books, that's courses, that's mastermind groups, that's consulting. I mean, the list goes on and on. So the second $500 investment that has helped me achieve financial freedom is increasing my street credentials. And there's a few different ways you can do this and I'll just speak from experience so you can hear a little bit firsthand like what I did and what it did for me. You know, one of the first things that I invested into, for those that don't know, I was a practicing financial planner, financial advisor for 16 years and was doing YouTube and the blog as I was also being a financial advisor. I think it was three, four years into my career, I was looking at ways to make myself stand out from the competition. And when I first started in the business, I was younger. I think I actually started as an advisor. I was right out of college. I was 24 years old. And when you are a financial advisor, I didn't have any facial hair then. I mean, I was shaving. I could grow facial hair, kinda. But I was young, I was young, I was not married, I wasn't even engaged at the time. And here I am, a 20 some year old, trying to convince these 50, 60, 70 year old baby boomers that I was the right guy to manage their life savings. That was a tall order to fulfill and I was able to do it many times, but there were many other times where it was challenging. Here I am, this 20-some year old, trying to convince them that I'm the guy. I'm the guy that is going to manage their money and make sure that they don't lose it all. The only thing I could really do was try to act older than I was, which, you know, that's easier said than done. You know, wearing the shirt and tie and you know, looking professional and all that stuff. But the other way that I felt that I could do it was by increasing my credentials. So in the financial planning industry, you can get different designations. And one of the first ones that I focused on was the, I think it was called the CRPC, the Chartered Retirement 
planning counselor designation. That is a mouthful. And I actually did this while I was deployed to Iraq. When I had downtime in between missions, I was reading these stupid books on, I don't know why I did this, these books on, you know, investing and retirement planning, yada, yada, yada. And there was like maybe 12 books I had to read and then I had to take a test. And I did this while I was in Iraq, passed the test, ended up getting the designation while I was deployed. And that was one of those ways where I could show my clients and my prospective clients, hey, I'm committed to this. Yes, I know I am younger, but I have a designation. I'm a chartered retirement planning counselor. Man, that sounds really professional, doesn't it? But what I felt was at the time was like that was the stepping stones to getting my CFP designation, which I ended up doing next. And the CFP designation stands for Certified Financial Planner. And it is by far one of the most recognized designations in the financial services industry. And you don't have to become a CFP. It's just one of those where if you want to, once again, I had to, I ended up doing a, a crash course. It was an accelerated program. We're talking about accelerated learning. I think it was like nine months where I had to go up to St. Louis, Missouri, and I had to sit in a classroom for three and a half days every month for nine months and then take a two day exam. And I had to pass that exam, which I actually thought I failed when I first took it. Didn't, I actually passed it. And then I got my CFP designation and that was just another way that I increased my street cred. And I actually stopped using the other designation, stopped using the CRPC and then just did the CFP, which I still have today. All right, so the third investment, and this was the big one, was investing into an online business. The very first investment for me on the online business side was purchasing a domain. I don't know if this was the first domain that I purchased, but my blog, goodfinancialsense.com, you know, that was a $12.95 investment, something like that. I might even had a coupon to save me 15, 20% from GoDaddy when I purchased it. But purchasing that domain and then beginning the journey of starting the blog, whew, you know, didn't know anything about blogging, didn't know anything about SEO, search engine optimization, didn't know anything about website design, online conversions, nothing, nothing. I was five years into being an advisor and uh, left my prior firm to go independent. And we can talk about that in another video. But then that gave me the ability to market myself differently. Little did I know that this blog, that this website would end up becoming what is basically the sole business right now that has furnished our home and this pool house and our lifestyle, and which ultimately led to me selling my financial planning practice and focusing on the online business first time. But we talk about, you know, a $500 investment. Obviously the domain was not $500. You know, that was 12 bucks, something like that. And from there I bought a theme, like a website design, and that was a couple hundred dollars. And then I paid somebody else to make a newer design and then end up hiring different contractors like writers and virtual assistants. And there's been many $500 investments along the way. But initially, I think it was a couple hundred bucks, which I didn't even have to do. I mean, now if I were to just starting all over and I had no idea how to do this, I would just go to Fiverr, find somebody there to get me set up. But my goodness, like that has been a lot of fun. And I've got other videos on the channel. I talk about the blogging journey and how to make your first $1,000. I talk about how I believe that starting a blog is better than getting your MBA. I've learned more starting an online business on my own than I believe that I would have got from an MBA. I started my MBA program, ended up dropping out and ended up being one of the best decisions I ever made. But the online business has been a true blessing. And for those that are interested in starting a blog and also making your first $1,000, you can go to make1kchallenge.com. It's a free challenge email series that will show you how to set up your first blog and also make your first $1,000. And if you do sign up for that free challenge, there is an upgrade if you want to purchase that. It is not required, it is $7. It's our content blogging startup bundle. A lot of people sign up for the free challenge, like, oh no, it's not free, it's paid. No, the challenge is free. We'll give you the email series, we'll give you all everything that you do need to get set up. But if you want a little more tools, if you want to accelerate, getting your blog set up, then that's when you can opt for that $7 upgrade. So that's what the Make 1K Challenge is all about. 
but the online business, grateful for that. And the final thing, the big one, which obviously I think maybe I could have started with this one and I, you probably knew this one was coming, but it was investing. And I wanted to, I don't know if I really saved this one last for anything special, but I will say I still get people here on the channel. I get people on the blog. I still come across people you know, in real life, maybe not as much now during the, the pandemic, but they know they need to invest. Like they know that they need to start investing, but yet they have this belief that they don't have enough money to do it. They believe that they've got to have thousands of dollars, that you've got to be rich. You got to wait until the perfect time, whenever that is to start investing. And I just want to just challenge like that misconception, that limiting belief, that lie that you don't. And I've shared this before, but in case you're new to the channel, you know, for me investing, when I first started, I was still in debt. I was an intern at the investment firm I ended up getting hired for or hired by. And I started investing a whopping $25 a month. Like that's it. That's all I was putting in. You might think, oh, that's not even worth the time. That's not even worth the effort. But what ends up happening is by investing that $25 a month, the fact that I freed up that amount of money because I wasn't making a lot. I was broke. I was a broke college kid, but I ended up learning so much about investing, about the stock market, because before that, only experience I had, only knowledge I had was from textbooks. You know, I didn't read the newspaper. I, I wasn't researching stocks online. I didn't even know what a mutual fund really was. But by making that first investment would end up being mutual funds, end up being pretty crappy mutual funds actually. But after opening my first brokerage account, then I'm getting you know different statements and I'm like looking up different mutual funds and I'm comparing the fund that I own to other funds and then ETFs are coming out and I'm looking at stocks and all of a sudden like I'm being immersed into the stock market. That $25 a month end up becoming me maxing out my Roth IRA, putting money in my 401k, uh, getting to the point where I could then max out my 401k to learn about individual stocks, to learn about the Roth IRA, and then ultimately just learn about entrepreneurship and everything else. I mean, it has led to this amazing path of possibilities and opportunities that I didn't even know existed, all because I started with $25 per month. And that investment of my money, that investment of my time, that has also contributed to me achieving financial freedom. And I'm grateful for it and I want you to be grateful for it. I want you to not believe that you have to wait for the right time. You know, right now where the stock market is all time highs, we've seen Tesla stock soaring, we've seen Bitcoin continue to hit all these highs. We've got the Wall Street bets, Reddit group going on, GameStop, AMC, all this stuff. And you might still be thinking, oh, I'm waiting for the right time. Like oh, I missed my opportunity. I missed my time to get in. And I just want to call BS on that because now is the time. And I don't care if it's investing in the market. I don't care if it's investing into an online business. I don't care if it's investing into increasing your street cred, whatever that is for you. Find out what that first thing is. Find out what the first action step that you need to take and just do it. I assure you, like when I look back when I first started, I never would have imagined. I couldn't define what financial freedom was back then, but now I get it. And it's all because I started taking the right steps. And not every single step was right, trust me. There were a lot of <laughs> a lot of bad steps along the way, but each wrong step got me closer to the right step. And here I am and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful I could share this message and this story with you. So once again, if you found any value for this, be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next vid. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and all you can make it awesome. Until next time.